Hey you guys and welcome to my channel. Thanks for stopping back today. We are going to do an art journal page out of this art journal and I'm thinking I want to use this absorbent ground. I'm going to use a bunch of water and I'm going to use some distress paints by Tim Holtz and I'm wondering if I'm going to have too much water. I'm not sure. So I'm using some absorbent ground that you would use for watercolor to prep your paper um, on my background just to see what happens. Tim Holtz always says if you're thinking what if, what if, what if, well you should be trying it. So I tried it and in the end I didn't think that it was necessary so in the future I may not use it. I'm just giving that a dry and I put it down with my palette, like palette knife, like I said. And most of this project, I'm going to, you know, speed along and let you follow. Let me know if you like this format. You know, me not explaining everything. A lot of it is very self-explanatory. If you um, just follow along, and. Um, we're gonna do some of it like that so i'm making sure that my art journal page here is dry and i'm using a page out of an in and out book by groombacher and i will definitely link that below it's a wonderful wonderful product and i think that a lot of people really really like it if they do go ahead and purchase it um, now I'm going to dig out some of my Distress Paints and I have been watching um, a live video by Tim Holtz all about Distress Paints and oh my gosh I'm absolutely addicted and I'll try and link that for you above here. It's by Tim Holtz and like I said it's all about Distress Paints. So I am working on getting a nice collection of Distress Paints in my stash and really, really looking forward to adding more and more all the time. So I put water on my dried piece of art journal page paper and now I did spray the um, Distress Paints and now I'm putting the paper through the paint and I'm adding more water to the paint on the paper and we're letting that paint run and just do its thing. So the colors that I used here were um, Speckled Egg, a um, Peeled Paint, and I want to say a Oh boy, I can't even remember. Let me try and dig it out here. A evergreen bow. That's the other one that I used here. And I'm giving it more and more water and watching that paint um, just run on the background here. And I'm going to try and see if I can get it to something that I like. Now the real nice thing about using these distress paints that I'm learning from Tim Holtz is that they're going to dry permanent. So I'm going to get the background the way I want it. I'm adding paint and dabbing it up. And now here my background is dry and I have a whole bunch of these little elements that I cut out of um, old calendars, all of these flowers and things. And I was just digging through them and trying to align that flower um, collage there on the bottom of the piece, seeing what I got. And I pulled out all of these, just setting it aside, and we're going to work on that background a little bit more. Of course, it is dry. And here is a piece of screen that I have in my stash. And what I wanted to do is add some more texture to this background. And I'm digging out some of my sprays. And I got out Speckled Egg Dis Distress Spray Stain, and I'm putting it through that screen. Well, it worked perfectly if I would have only given it, you know, one or two sprays. 
but the more I sprayed, the more the um, texture image kind of melted together. So um, I got a lot of real cool color, but I didn't get a lot of real cool um, uh, texture by using that screen. It's fine, you know, and then I thought maybe I could um, pick up some color through the screen using a baby wipe, but the screen was just too um, uh, porous and it just was not going to work. So I'm thinking, thinking, I'll put some of my French script that I use all the time in the background and I'm using some archival ink doing that because that archival ink is going to be permanent. And this is a uh, stamp I use all the time. You definitely don't need a French script, but if you're into art journaling and mixed media and card making, I think a script stamp of some sort is a good thing to have in your stash. Um, archival ink dries really, really fast, and I used a blue color there, and the blue that I used was cornflower blue, and um, I did just give it a real quick dry just so I didn't smudge it. I was trying to decide what to do next for the next layer, and I'm thinking I'm going to use this really cool um, stencil, and it has like a leaf leaf pattern to it. I want to say it is by the Crafters Workshop. Um, I will try and find that and link it. Um, I always try and do my best, but sometimes I don't have the packaging in my stash, so sometimes I can't find everything. But I will try and work on it and leave it below for you. I'm going back with some more Distress Paint, and one of my very most favorite colors is Peeled Paint. I'm just using a piece of cut and dry foam and that works really, really well with stencils for me because you have the one side that's very, very um, hard and the other side is very, very sponge-like. So depending on the situation and the um, texture that you want to get on your piece. You can use either side, so that works really, really well. Just adding a little bit more of interest to that background, and I'm trying to remember as I'm doing it that I'm going to have all of those flowers that I had cut out from um, calendars in uh, previous months to put down at the bottom so it's going to look like a whole bunch of flowers in the garden and then to the top we're going to have a butterfly and a dragonfly floating up in the air there and I have this piece of calendar here and you can see the leaf pattern that it has on there I'm using my um, black acrylic paint and my airbrush medium in this um, fine tip applicator and I'm just trying to um, imitate that leaves of that branch in the background and I just love using this applicator and that um, airbrush medium I think it is so very neat and I love how it turned out in this piece of course, you need to let that dry because that airbrush medium is a very liquid and I think it's going to take maybe about 20-25 minutes. Now here I grabbed out some gloss spray by Diane uh, Wakely, Dina Wakely, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, Dina Wakely. And it is a gloss acrylic spray in the color of lemon. And I will try and link everything below, like I say. And now I'm going ahead and I am placing those flowers in my floral arrangement down at the bottom. I'm using my Elmer's <coughs> Craft Bond all-purpose glue stick to stick those down. And um, I'm also using just a paper towel to smooth that down so that I have a good stick. 
you have to remember what type of mediums you have already in the background and I do have one medium that's going to be water-based and that is going to be that distress spray stain so I want to be very careful that I don't activate that because I'm thinking that that will move in the background and I don't want to smudge and smear the cool texture that I already have. So I'm just tucking the flowers underneath and around and I'm giving it a really, really cool arrangement. And I picked out the orange or the yellows and the reds and there's a butterfly and there's a bee in there and a little bit of white to counterbalance and a tiny bit of orange so everything will work with the butterflies and the dragonflies at the top and it'll be a very very cohesive piece this project went together very very fast and very very easy so be sure to dig through those calendars I save all of my calendars from year to year and people actually give them to me too because there's so many cool images that you can use in your art journaling and your mixed media now there's the um, butterfly that I was speaking of that I want to put up to the top and a dragonfly and there's just some branches that the dragonfly is um, on and I wanted to cut those off and I thought, well, I'll just uh, use those branches in the composition down at the bottom <clears throat> and go ahead and s use those little elements instead of throwing them in the trash. So I'm sticking them down real careful again with my glue stick and just kind of cleaning up the area and then putting down the butterfly and the dragonfly. Um, making sure that everything is stuck down pretty well and I am going to go ahead and use my matte medium very carefully and go over everything because I wanted a, um, a non-porous surface so that I could use my pit markers and create some shadow there with all of those layers of flowers. But first off, I needed to find a sentiment. And I have this little bucket that I um, put sentiments in. And I just um, keep cutting them out of magazines and books and things. And whenever I see a neat word or a neat couple of words, I will put those in this bucket. And when I'm needing something for a sentiment or even just inspiration, I'll dig that bucket out and just kind of take a peek and see what I've got. So the things that I went with there, um, I went with Soar, and I put that by the butterfly up on the top right. And the other two I put was Feel Happy, Make Art. Now here's where I'm showing you. I am putting um, a layer of that matte medium down, and I'm being very careful not to smear any of that background because I didn't want to activate any of that spray stain. And of course the um, airbrush medium and black acrylic paint is not going to move and the archival ink is not going to move and also those green leaves that I stenciled there by using my distress paint that's also not going to move so I felt pretty confident that I wasn't going to have a problem but I did want to have a uh, careful hand here I'm putting down the word soar by the butterfly and I'm also putting down those two other sentiment pieces feel happy make art and that is really working for me I um, haven't been able to go ahead and teach any hands-on workshops yet people are a little cautious about that so I have just really been focusing on making our making my videos for you you know and and working at making myself be happy and making my art and my art journal pages my mixed media pages any type of cards just makes me really happy so here i dug out my faber castell pit uh big brush pit markers and i noticed i did not have them 
um, color swatched. So I quick did that so I could decide what color of brown I wanted to use to go ahead and border all of these flowers. Here I'm using the color Nougat and I'm thinking it's not quite um, dark enough. So I switched to a different one and I noticed the second one is way too dark. It is um, walnut stain, I believe, or um, maybe it's, the, I think it's burnt umber and it's just way too dark. So I quickly, 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 before that is dry, I grab a baby wipe and try to save um, what I did. And it does wipe off if you get to it fast enough. But other than that, when it dries, it's going to be permanent because that's India ink that's in those pit brush, big brush pit markers. And um, you want to be careful because that is going to dry careful. Uh, permanent. So here I'm going around all the flowers and all the leaves and I'm smudging it with my finger there and it's creating a really cool shadow so that it gives that bottom section a lot of depth and dimension. This was a really quick and easy product. I a product, a project, excuse me. I hope you enjoyed it. Here's the pictures in the back and be sure, be sure to subscribe follow my channel. I'd love to have you. Thanks for watching and have a great week. We'll see you next Thursday. Bye!